Good evening, Star Wars fans. Uh, Justin Miyashiro, Jag Tech Hazardville, coming to you with coverage of the uh, top eight of the Java Cup. We got um, Adam Fletcher, Echo Base Trooper, our newest uh, advocate, um, up against Jeffrey Levine Treadwell. Uh, they looks like are getting set. I see them both in the Gemp lobby. Um, so this will be an interesting match because uh, Adam is the only player who went 6-0 and in the Java Cup. So we'll see if he can defend his uh, defend his perfect record here. Hey, Queso, thanks for the sub. Uh, all right, let's see here. I suppose I need to tell them that I'm ready to go. Oh, and maximize that. Uh, well, Dan, I mean, the new interface is certainly nicer to look at. Um, if only it loaded for me. So, you know, uh, I do what I can. Are we taking bets? I got money on Trudwell. Um, I mean, you guys are welcome to do whatever you want. I, I, I have no, I have no idea who to favor in this. Uh, Adam has actually been playing really well for quite a while. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to see kind of what they, what they bring out here. Um, I do have kind of a soft spot because Echo Base Trooper is based in the Tatooine region, which is where I am. So, you know. He's not officially a member of Team High Ground because he lives in Utah, and Utah's quite far from Colorado, but, uh... Gotta pull for the local guy. I actually shouldn't say that, because I, I have no idea, actually, where, um, where Treadwell's from, so... <laughs> Treadwell's based in Tatooine as well. Well, in that case, I really have no rooting interest, so... Um, both games. I have no idea, Dan. I don't know if they're covering both. Um, if they are covering both, I really hope they play quickly. Um, cause, uh, it's nine o'clock for me and I have work tomorrow. Um, is Nevada tattooing? I should be, I think. All right, Adam needs a couple of minutes. So, um, there's a lot of Star Wars going on right now. We got game PC games going on. Uh, we got Outrider Cup going on. There was another top eight match, I think earlier today. A little while ago, Ryan Sirsten against uh, against Kevin Yap. I didn't actually see, or actually no, I, I watched the recap of that. I didn't see it live. Uh, I want all advocates to lose badly. Well, I mean, <laughs> I guess that's <laughs> that's a that that's a, a thing you can you can root for, I suppose. Um, some of them don't win at all. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. I mean, Chris Kelly's in the chat. Chris Kelly is Chris Kelly knows what he's doing. the best one. I realize I don't actually know a lot of people's Twitch names, so Chris Kelly Esquire, I'm pretty confident of who that is, but uh, more than that, it's kind of up in the air for me sometimes. I realize that the uh, NPC is only a week and a half away. Um, I'm pretty sure what I'm playing, so, you know, we're getting there. Gonna have to go down to Office Max to get the new expansion and stuff, but um, or your local print store. We're not sponsored, so. Oh, it's Scott. Okay, it all makes sense now. I mean, Scott did beat me the other day with what he claims was not a shield busting CCT deck, but was definitely floating Pod Race Arena boot to Eve. Pod race, a bulbous pod racer, and Wado's box. So, you know, I'll leave it up to the audience to decide on that. It's always suspicious when a CCT main deck grabs perimeter scan. That's that's not a good that's not a good sign. I 
everyone floats that. I mean, you started the emperor. It wouldn't have. I, I at, at that point, I, I wouldn't have even been surprised to see like numbers out of you from there. Like, question every shield pull versus advocate. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I, I, I'm. I'm not gonna say it's not. I'm not gonna say that uh, it's the first time I've lost a pod race. It is the first time that I lost eleven force to Watto's box. So, you know. Man, Dan with the shade of listing the best current advocate players. I mean, based on current performance. I hate to throw the shade, but I, I would put Jane app number one and Chris number two. Now, admittedly, some of that could be because Chris is really busy and doesn't get to play as much anymore, but um, playing more makes you better, so, you know. Six of us, neither of them play. I mean, yeah, Chris Chris doesn't really doesn't really play anymore, and I remember Matt Keith, so I don't know. Where's the puppet Chris Kelly rank? Uh... <laughs> You definitely have to ask Kendall on that, I guess. Chris has the rings, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jared, I can't really fault you for not winning a major um, when you lost to Joe Olson in the top eight twice this year. When Joe didn't lose ever on a Sunday this year, so last year, so. Losing to Joe, losing to Joe in the finals in the middle of this run is is kind of like winning a major. Like, man, I feel totally unprepared to cover this match because I didn't even see what either of them played during the Java Cup. Um, I know I played, I think four different decks over six games. Um, I gave up on trying to play my best deck after it was like one and three, so. Two majors, I'll take it. You lost in the top four of one of them, so that's why I was saying if you lost in the if you lose in the finals to Joe, you know that's 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 basically a win. Oh, thanks for pointing it out. I would have missed it. All right, here we go. So we got Treadwell's on deal. That's the name of the objective, and I refuse to call it by an acronym. Against watch, or nope, uh, nope. Against we have a plan, which really shouldn't be too much of a surprise. It's a deck that Adams is very well known for playing a lot of. Nope, the deck's called Deal. I don't care if it doesn't even play Dark Deal. It's called Deal. All right, and he's starting Arrestor Secret Plans, which the objective allows. Then we got Mobilization Points, Endor Shield and Imperial Decree V. Decree V, uh, a good tech card against WAP. Mostly WAP. I guess profit a little bit, but mostly WAP. Um, okay, and then turn his first action is to pull the Executor with mob points, which would make sense. think deal is too fast for WAP, but this is Adam. If he's playing Landing Claw, you said otherwise it might be a long game. Deflector Shield for the one. I mean, I will not profess to being an expert in either of these decks. Um, I will say I found WAP to be surprisingly durable um, and surprisingly threatening, uh, even if you're not even really planning to contest the audience chamber. So... We'll see. Uh, we'll see what Treadwell goes with. Um, okay, so Adam pulled the Camino system and Queen Amidala for his. Uh, we'll take the long way pulls. Treadwell gets Admiral Piet and Admiral Ozil non V. Did not see an Ascension Guns pull, which would suggest that Ascension Guns is already in hand. Um, because normally you would pull Ascension Guns before you activate the one force, so you don't activate the Ascension Guns, because it's super important. Um, 
Amusingly, Ascension Guns in WAP is one of the few times when one of your pullable cards starts in your opening hand and it's not a huge bummer. Because Ascension Guns is actually like potentially kind of useful if you if you can pull it again. Pull the gun in or out after turn one. I don't know why. You really, really don't want to activate the gun on turn one. If you, like a activating ascension, activating your only copy of ascension guns on turn one is really bad. I mean, we'll have to ask Adam later what his preference is. I pretty much always pull ascension guns on turn one before you activate it. Before you activate your force from your objective. Maybe he's playing two. He could be playing two, in which case, in which case, yes, uh, not pulling it is fine. Okay. Uh, so Treadwell pulls Cloud City Occupation with his objective, and then gets the Executor document, and then just plays the Bestman system from his hand. So he open-handed that. Adam is better than me with WAP. I mean, yes. Um, Adam is better than most people with WAP, I would say. Even Robbie. Um, and then Treadwell's just going to pass after uh, activating his four. He didn't even draw. He drew one card. Okay. So staying, staying at 12... You don't necessarily know if he's playing Grimtosh, but it's such a disaster if your executor gets Grimtosh, so you really can't afford to to draw much more than that. And he's playing super cautiously, so... Alright, so we got Queen Amidala from hand, Seal Bibble from hand. This seems like a pretty solid, uh, a pretty solid suite of characters to open with here. I know a lot of times WAP likes to start with a Jedi in case of barrier and stuff like that, because, like, Queen Amidala getting barriered at the courtyard's a disaster. Um, but you don't necessarily, you're not necessarily expecting deal to to be sitting on that or to be especially threatening at the courtyard they could certainly have like an app mall or something like that but so anakin padawan learner with a jedi lightsaber v from jedi business we're activating a force probably moving everybody in it's so a pretty good turn one. Got a lot of activation without having to put his battleground his battleground system out. Um, he didn't find his he didn't find uh, boss in chamber or the Camino two o whichever one he's playing. Probably only one of them, but oh, Dan gifting a sub. Should have gifted a sub to me, Dan. I don't have Famison. I should just probably pay for a subscription, actually, but, you know, whatever. It was random. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's a, I can still imagine you love me in your heart. Let's try to pulling the... There is no try shield playing around sense. Probably alter, actually, is what he's playing around. Who are you again? On Twitch, I'm Jagtech, because it's too late to change everything. So Trouble's trying to decide how he wants to deploy this turn. Um, Anakin's a really interesting one to have played there. I mean, you, you want somebody with a lightsaber, probably, to back up your dudes who are going to the throne room. So that makes sense. Um, okay, yeah, there's the free executor effect. Uh, doesn't look like an altar. I would assume, though, Goldenrod's coming out. Although I suppose you maybe don't care about playing. No, okay, there it is. 
All right, then executor for two force. Presumably Piet. Yep. Oh. Sure. Piet to the docking bay. Why not? Same difference. Let's pull the battle deployment. Sure. Sure. Uh, he did verify with a rest order already, so that explains that. We got battle deployment. He's going to be playing a walker. Ooh. Oh, okay. So also going down so that he can play occupation. And we'll field Laren going down so he can play occupation. All right. Oh, I suppose now he gets to play, yeah, the unpiloted combat vehicle. Yep. All right. So it looks like both decks are set up to go on turn two here. I was saying Anakin's an interesting one to put down here because Anakin is certainly the most versatile character in this deck. Um, ah, okay. He found his Aerotech Corporation, which is presumably his normal starting uh, effect. Uh, he flex started Decree instead here. Could very well be useful later. Miss the intro. What's the read on this matchup? The matchup is I have no idea. <coughs> I have no clue who's favored in this matchup. Um, so you didn't miss much, Joker King. Anakin to throw him as bad needs to be on a ship. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Dan. Is I, I feel like committing the Anakin here is interesting. Because, like, Mace and Qui-Gon and stuff are great characters on the ground, but they don't really do anything in space. They're just forfeit fodder in space. Anakin's the one you really want in space. Now, of course, also, it'll be interesting to see if Treadwell has space besides, like, Executor and the Onyx Ties. Um, a lot of times, deal decks don't really have anything past that. Uh... Which might mean you don't even need Anakin in space, because you're just going to run. Hundred percent side with Adam's decision making with my first stance. Yeah, I mean, I certainly feel like there's a distinct possibility that uh, he just wanted to put a character with the saber at um, on the table on turn one and. Anakin was the one he had, so Anakin was the one he went with. Oh, there's Kit Fisto. Gonna draw with Kit Fisto. Anakin in space isn't gonna eliminate the executor change the cactus of the game. Yeah, that's what I was that's what I was saying, Jared's like Unless there's some other space in here besides, uh, or, or unless there's some other space in um, the deal deck besides Executor and the Onyx ties, then yeah, Anakin adding plus one to the desk doesn't really change anything. So yeah, it's Kit. I put him down now, Anakin. I mean, uh, Kit Fisto has the interesting ability to go directly to the throne room from the courtyard, so. I think if he didn't have CEO Bibble, I actually think he probably would have, and he had Kit Fisto, I would, I would imagine he might have actually played Kit Fisto, put the saber on, and moved him directly to the to the throne room. Interesting, he's not even, I guess he doesn't need to. I was gonna, he's not even going to ascension goes, but he doesn't actually need to. He can just move people in without spending the ascension guns from his hand. There's certainly no need to. Ah, uh, and now he can move Kit Fisto in. Oh, okay. I was going to say he can move Kit Fisto in to protect the throne room instead of Anakin, but he decides not to do that. That's fine. I mean, Anakin is actually a little bit better here um, because of Amidala's text. So Anakin is defense 7. And immune to, and everybody here is immune to you were beaten in sniper, whereas Kit Fisto wouldn't be. So, 
taking a four this turn. Uh, uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, he is. Taking four, but threatening to do five back, so... Wife well, hasn't banked on being a bully in space since, like, 2016. That is before my time. I've heard of Space WAP. Seems cool. Jedi Biz changed the game for that deck. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Alright. Adam loses Disarmed and Jedi Concentration from hand to the Drain at the Plaza. Gonna lose Sense off Reserve to the Drain at Bespin. And a mace from reserve. None of those cards seem super important, so. Spending really was good back, good trick back then. I mean, I've read Rick Lee Bravo Leader. He's really, he's, this text is really good. Alright, so Treadwell finds his docking bay. Can okay, move as a react for free. He's going to use his objective to take a second occupation to hand. Did Adam pull a system? Yeah, he pulled Camino. Playing it exactly the way I would expect Watt to play it, though. You hold your Camino system until you have your ship. Battle deployment. Blizzard Scout 1. Adam's not afraid of Monarch. He has 13 in hand. And Tempest Scout 3. And Merrick Steel as pilot on Blizzard Scout 1. Um, ooh, while piloting can't cancel or substitute battle destiny draws here. That's actually really, really good. And he has the course revenue irritating. Ooh, okay. That's not good. That's not good for Adam if he wants to get into battles. Um, well, neither of those cards are cards that you wanted stacked on there. General Veers and Blizzard and Tempest Cat 6. I don't know, I think uh, Treadwell's in a fine position. There's no uh, no particular cause for concern. He just really needs to, he wants to like leave force up to react people around and stuff. Ooh, Piet will shuttle down. All right. Oh, he probably has a react tie, so make sure that he can draw destiny. Okay, no, that makes sense. All right. So Adam's gonna have to change the. Adam's gonna have to change the math here somewhere. Because he's currently facing four, five, six, seven, eight damage, and doing five back if he pays for everything. Ballsy, that move was here. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like he probably has the Onyx tie to react with. And possibly a barrier also would be my guess. Um, I mean, there's also there's also the fact that with Anakin committed, there's not like a whole lot that um that Wap can even attack with anyway. Uh what's the dark side objective? The dark side objective is this deal's getting worse all the time. Um which uh, he pulled this. He pulled the uh, Cloud City Downtown Plaza as the battleground site. And then he got the Secret Plans combo. Did not play all wrapped up, which is not a surprise. And then he's been using it to pull, um, 
to pull cards every deploy phase. Um, I would be very surprised if we saw the, the seven side of the objective in this game. So I'm going to leave it there. A uh, decent chance of sense to cancel react. I mean, yes and no. He lost a sense to the drain, so he could have a second one. That's not impossible. Um, probably has the barrier, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he also has 10 power. Like, that's it's not, it's not a huge deal. He's 10 power and immune less than 12. Like, I don't... That's what I was saying, is that, like... What could he have? Like, ri like Falcon Solo Chewy would cost 10 force and then walk right into course, uh, walk right into sand and still not be able to crack the executor. Like, that's just like, I, I don't know. I don't think there's really a lot that, uh, that he has to be worried about, even if he doesn't have the react. So. He's a floating power pivot and a gun on Bravo Fighter. I mean, that'd be sweet. Bravo Fighter, even Bravo Fighter V can't hit this though. You have to get draw greater than defense value. Like, oh, power pivot though to make power zero. Okay, sure. You know that 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 that, that would be sweet. I hope we see that. Uh, Adam thought for a while and. Decided he's just going to pay for damage here. So we got the ping, killed Admiral Cherno from reserve. That's big. That That's important. Um, and the drain eats Tempest Scout 5 from hand and Force Push from reserve. Tempest Scout 5 is uh, kind of whatever. Cool, sure. Why isn't Adam playing Tarmycin? It's really hard to deploy in WAP since WAP says you can't. So, free ride combo to cancel Cloud City occupation, and then combo gets grabbed. And then presumably another drain happens. Yep, to bury the occupation. The burying it doesn't matter so much because we know he has another one already. Are any no rei characters available for WAP? Um, I don't think so. None come to mind. Ooh, okay, so Tempest Scout 2, Lost from Reserve, that also kind of whatever, doesn't really matter that much. Close the Blast Doors got lost too, though, and that could be big. Mostly for this bottom text here, if Landon Call just lost, place it out of play. So Jairus Janik backing up at the throne room. Sure. Okay, uh, and then I would imagine we're gonna move Anakin over to threaten more damage. There's not a lot of reason to play Jairus Janik otherwise. Camino, okay. Uses Jedi business to verify. Because he's trying to deploy a location that I assume isn't in his deck. Uh, rarely do you see WAP play one of these three locations to pull a Jedi business. Actually, I'm not sure I've ever seen it. It's possible, certainly, but it's just not common. All right, and there is Rick in Queen Starship. Do you have a pilot to go with it? That seems like it's probably important. Nope. Anakin moves over. And Adam's going to draw a couple cards, save one to use his objective slash grabber slash barrier. Arc 170 starfighters are possible in case to stop or react. That sounds awesome, Joker King. I want to see that now. Because I have not seen those guys played yet, and they seem cool, and I'm down. Let's do it. All right, Treadable activating. Uh, down to two cards in reserve. He's actually only got 18 down. 
he's committed a lot to the board already. Um, Adam's going to lose the Camino 2-0 from hand, doesn't need that. And then we've got Drain of 2 at the downtown plaza. That's going to be Perimeter Scan from Reserve, Jedi Concentration from Reserve. And finally we have, or nope, not finally. And we got Drain of 1 for Control Tunnel Vision. Sure. And finally the Drain of 1 at Bespin. And that is going to be Master Qui-Gon from Reserve. So pretty even board state here. We got 18, whoops, sorry, 18 down for Treadwell, 21 down for Echo Base Trooper, and they're 9 to 11 in hand, although we're in the middle of Treadwell's deploy phase. There come the Onyx Ties. Uh, he's not pulling any gun, although he is going to get two Destinies here. And uh, Adam can only cancel one of them, so... That could be bad. Uh, oh, he got the extra shield pull from Onyx. I was trying to remember why he had five shield pulls. Uh, and then Cloud City Occupation. So shield pulls, he got Oppressive Enforcement, really covering the sense. And then we got Resistance, um, just in case, I think. Because he gets a free one anyway, so why not? Yeah, no, actually, I don't understand why he spent a shield pull on resistance here, but Sans bad news for Adam. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, well, so it is and it isn't. Um, because Sand will mean that Treadwell has to just naturally draw a five to crack the ship. Because it'll stop one of it'll stop one of Treadwell's own battle destinies. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, the whole point of why I was saying he needed a pilot so he doesn't draw destiny here. That's a bummer. I don't know that he should really sand here, actually. Okay, well. He's probably a better WAP player than me. He pulls uh, Tempest Cat 6. I guess getting the Tempest Cat 6 is good. Because um, that is, I mean, that is a card you want to have in your hand. Ah, there he finally plays the Ascension Guns. So he's going to look at some cards, figure some stuff out. I don't think I don't think that Treadwell has had the okay. I was gonna say I don't think he's had the opportunity to track that at all, so I don't think he's put anything back or anything. So yep, just happened to draw the five. That is pretty bad news. wonder if he's just kind of walkling the ship. Wouldn't be terrible. Okay, Wolfie Laren shuttles up. Makes sense. That seemed like, um, it seemed like in a kind of weird deploy for Adam given that he seemed to have just nothing. Maybe he was just gambling on the not drawing the five and then peeling a couple and playing like solo or something to back it up. Well, we'll see what his backup plan is. Team Advocate. Um, I mean, Adam's ahead right now, but his board position is definitely worse. <laughs> team Proofing. Alright, so we are going to get the ping of one from the objective. It's going to lose an Imperial Command from hand. Yeah, it doesn't seem like an especially relevant card here. Worth keeping in mind that since it's a top eight and it's match play, um, Treadwell does have to play the kind of careful game of 
managing his life force as he proceeds to win the game. Because certainly, I mean, as it currently stands, he's likely to win, but if Adam can make it like a win by 10 or something, given how bad the position looks right now, that's not bad. No, he just has another Rick ship. Sure, that'll do it. Okay. Well, we know the bottom card. There's the solo. So of the three cards in his reserve, we know the bottom one is the Ascension Guns. And the Chewy. Not the Falcon, but, you know, that's this. So now it'll... Hmm. So with the second ship in hand, actually, I kind of like that deploy then. Because he kind of, he really just baited Treadwell into... He, like, Treadwell burned a draw off, off the sand effect that didn't really do anything. I guess we don't know that for sure. He could have like canceled the first draw, and then the second one wouldn't have been wouldn't have been a five, so he would have like peeled some, so that would have been bad. But now, right, like he goes into this battle, and Treadle just has to pull a card off Stan. He can't not. Uh, but then after he does that, right, Adam loses the Chewy, which is easy. Yeah, forces out the second sand card. Yeah, exactly. And now the sand is spent. Oh. And here's where Adam's just a true master of WAP. Now he pulls the Ascension Guns. So he can play Ascension Guns and set up those two draws. So he can take whichever lower destiny he wants out of there. That was good. I like that. This is what I was saying. If you just have the Ascension Guns in your opening hand with WAP, like a lot of other decks, right? Like if, you, if you're playing Watch Your Step and you open hand Corellia, it's like, oh, that's kind of a bummer. With Sand, if you open it with, um, with WAP, rather, if you open hand um, Ascension Guns, you just get to play it later, which is awesome. <laughs> yeah, so he plays the Ascension Guns, leaves the Yoda on top, draws the Yoda for Destiny. It's a total of four, which is going to mean the Colonel Jens in here. Oh man, and he draws a four for his battle destiny, so he doesn't even crack the immunity. Oof. Oof. For how bad the battle looked on Treadwell, for how, for how bad it looked for Adam on Treadwell's turn for the battle to happen and for him just like lose the ship and nothing, uh, the counterbeat was great. Uh, even though he like didn't do any damage and stuff, like it was still that was still great. So now, let's see. So we're doing he's doing a whole ton of damage. So you know there's there's still that there's still that to contend with. Uh, there's still eight damage happening here, um, but he's really like got to move something. It pretty much has to like move Onyx 2 back. Unless like, he, he could have another Colonel Gen, I suppose. Um, but he like has to he has to uh, he has to get the Onyx 2 out of there. Oh, they reverted. Okay. I was confused why they were saying good luck. Have fun at, at this point, but yeah, they just reverted. Tried to want to leave 3. Um, okay. Want to leave three? Sounds like a battle is going to happen somewhere. All right. So Adam's losing Clash, General Kenobi from hand, and Yoda from reserve to cover the occupation damage. And then we got five total damage of drains. It's going to be the Ascension Guns. By Ascension Guns, you did good work. And a Mace from hand. Yeah, he's not doing anything. Rebel Barrier from reserve. Naprin from reserve. Oh, and one more. Dorme from a 
observe. I believe she's the anti-spy handmaiden. Yep. She does not get played enough. She's really good. I mean, she's got a fair number of weaknesses, but Tex is so good. I'm interested to see what kind of battle we have. Okay, so he is going to verify. Um, I believe we know the f four? I think we know the fours on the bottom there. So the other two cards will be a mystery. I wonder if given that he picked up General Veers, he's like going to put a walker against Kit Fisto. Seems like probably what's going to happen. Question also is if there's any other space here for him to do anything besides move Onyx 2 away. He can also like reinforce the ground and have one of the admirals shuttle up for command and then move Executor in front of Camino, Onyx 2 in front of Bespin and like hope there's no other space. That seems like a really good way to lose a game that you're probably going to win though. So I, th I think I would probably just... Well, all right. If he moves the Onyx 2 over, then he's going to eat 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 damage back. Oh, okay. Well, there's Blizzard 4. And we know the perimeter scan got lost. I wonder if he just perimeter scans here out of the lost pile. That'd be cool. Sorry, I'm looking over here because the chat is is down in this corner. And presumably on the verify, he saw that there's no character to deploy, which is why he's not doing that right now. Oh, or they were, or Adam was thinking about the perimeter scan. All right, and Treadle deploys Corporal Drellison as a passenger. Right. Uh, and a Sergeant Barrack to go with him. I feel like he wants another character here so that he doesn't have to lose, because he's, he's going to have to lose one of his troopers otherwise. It's just like not great. Oh, sorry guys, the chat wasn't refreshing for me here. Let's see. Does he play multiple occupations or did he get back somehow? Yes, he has two occupations. He pulled one already, um, which is why he played the second one. Uh, might be worth it for him to deploy to the plaza just to block the drain of two. That could be. Okay, well, there's the Tempest Cat 6. There's the extra card I was thinking about. Uh, Barricade Combos, which is the, um, what? Which is like the, with that other biker guy, I think. I think your autocorrect filled in a couple of extra words there. But yes, Barrett Combos with the Biker Scout, which is, I think, why he wanted to play the Tempest Scout there. Um, yeah, he's just going to cancel that Destiny draw, though, because they were both fours. Uh,. So then Kit Fisto draws a three for his battle destiny. So he is down by four here. Ooh, can he peel four? Voice of Texas fighting with my voice near. Sure. Okay. Oh, and he reduces, right? He reduces the attrition. All right. Well, eight, he's pretty much just got to lose Kit Fisto. There's no way he can keep. There's no way he can keep him. 
It's an interesting deploy though, because you're committing to just putting Blizzard 4 out of play. Or I suppose playing your Gek, which is certainly a possibility. So he loses Master Qui-Gon from hand and Kit Fisto to cover the damage. Yeah, he really wanted to draw a 5 there so that he would have had to forfeit something. I mean, it would have just been the Tempest Scout, I guess. But that still would have been better than nothing. Yeah, and Onyx 2 has to move over. Blizzard 4 goes out of play. All right, well, he covered two damage there and did one back, so that's, that's not bad. Still got one, two, three, four, five, six damage coming back. So, I mean, it's kind of like I said, though, like, even, right, even if Adam doesn't, isn't unable to do anything to clear anything off of the table here at this point, um, I mean, he's still, like, He's still covering a lot, and he's still doing a bunch of damage back. Like, Treadwell's not... I don't know that Treadwell's really going to be able to win this game by much more than 10. I don't know. I shouldn't say that yet. We're still... You know, there's still a lot of game left to play. I would not run rely on Gick when he was zero force and force pile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, WAP is a deck that is uh, not especially likely to play Draw Their Fire, but... Uh, I mean, as I was saying earlier in the turn, that's certainly a good way to lose a game that you are otherwise clearly winning. So, playing it safe there definitely makes sense to me. Blizzard 4 just has to be a casualty of that. Jeff put Adam on the right deck. I mean, yeah. Um... Is this the best deck, though, for you to play if you know your opponent's going to play WAP? I don't actually even know that that's true. So Adam's saving three force here. I know what I want that to mean. I want that to mean he has an Ahsoka with sabers, and he's going to carve up some stormtroopers here. That's what I want that to mean. Does it actually mean that? I don't know. <laughs> but. Quick damage, you don't get resources and you neuter the damage a little with Imp Decree V. I mean, so Imp Decree V, yes, but a lot of decks can play Imp Decree V, so I don't think the deal is necessarily unique there. Quick damage, I mean, quick damage is always good, but WAP is not a deck that folds to quick damage, so I don't think that that really matters that much. And I'm not even, I'm not sure what you mean by you don't give up resources. Like, he certainly gives up a ton of icons, which makes it so that Adam doesn't have to deploy his 2 0, gets to hold his system as long as he wants. Uh, he certainly has put a ton on the table here, so yeah, I'm, uh, I guess I'm not uh... look, what I'll say is, you don't fight over the thrones, you can focus on your game I mean, what I was going to say is, if I knew like 80% that my opponent was going to play WAP uh, there's not a chance on earth that I'm not playing Hunt Down V, or uh, Hunt Down Non V like, some deck with, like, three EPP malls and just, like, come at me. Like, but, but that's me, you know? So, Darkside Mains is, like, kind of, is, like, a deck that I love, so. I mean, WAP is the kind of deck you can beat any deck with, so I don't think saying you can beat Hunt End with WAP is, uh, is the, uh, is necessarily a, a a worthy argument. Like Maul is fantastic against WAP. Lord Sidious is fantastic against WAP. Vader's great. Like them locking up your throne room is not good for you. Ooh, okay. 
Well, it's not Ahsoka, but he'll do. Hmm. Oh, just to cover damage and then you move in it can over. Okay, sure. Um, so we've got General Kenobi going up here against uh, Tempest Scout 1, which I like a lot because without a force active, Tempest Scout 1 was the only one that could move as a react for free. So these two other walkers just had to stand and watch this walker take it. Seen recall Chodo playing a decent amount of, of deal last year, so it might just have been a happy accident. Yeah, I mean, that seems pretty reasonable to me. He's playing a second Ascension Guns, so there it is. General Kenobi will add one to make that six, which is exactly enough to clear the site. No, the one he used in the Battle of Camino got lost to drains and stuff a while uh, last turn. So that's a, that's a second ascension guns. Then Anakin moves over. And presumably he'll leave that one force back. So man, from a down position, Adam's actually like in a pretty good spot here. He's taking five damage back on the next turn. Um. But Treadwell's got a couple of different things that he's got to he's got to deal with. Like Anakin's gonna shred a trooper if he battles. Panaka can just forfeit and cover the damage that he's that he's gonna take in the in the counterbeat. Treadwell's hand's really depleted, so he probably doesn't have a lot to go with here. Move over Kenobi and you save four force for next turn. Do you mean in terms of damage you're taking or? I guess, yeah, I feel like if you'd move Kenobi over, he would have saved, uh, he would have saved two loss here, but that would have used his only force left. So I kind of think I kind of think this is better. Because this way he forces Treadwell to use his resources moving around to cover his damage. And like Kenobi can move away, like. All right, sorry, I should say the words um so occupation eats the bravo fighter and jedi levitation from reserve drain at vespin kills odin nestler from hand uh drain at the walkway eats qui-gon's lightsaber the destiny 5 one from reserve and then the ascension guns is lost to the last drain Shredo might want to move the executive this turn to block the drain, especially if he has a command. Um, yeah. Well, so there's a big risk. In, like, the problem is if you do that, well, okay, I guess you could do that and leave the Onyx 2 behind to protect the occupation. That's not crazy. See, the thing is that he doesn't have an Admiral on the executor, so he has to, he'd have to pick Piet up which I think is going to be more expensive than he can afford. Okay, so we got Vader and Tarkin coming down. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a command here, or um, a leadership here out of Adam. Who's on the ship? It's Wolfie Laren. Ooh, Tarkin gets barriered. Okay, that'll do it too.
that's a good that that that's that's good also because that barrier is not a card you're uh, you're likely to find another use for except for losing a force. So good to get something out of it here. This is a permanent pilot of two, right? Okay. I was just thinking about how bad sorry about the mess would be. Oh, well, pop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's going to do it anyway. So the real question is going to be how much in reserve does, uh, does Adam leave here. So if he has a leadership, if he leaves seven back, that's one for Kenobi, two for Destiny there, and one, and two for Destiny there, and one. So he can actually, he can actually activate three. Uh, if he has a um, if he has a leadership, if he doesn't have a leadership battling into Vader and Tarkin, it's kind of insane. So, um, it's game one or two. This is game one, uh, Joe. I I don't know when they're going to play game two. I kind of hope it's not in ten minutes. <laughs> um, it's still early enough for me that I can cover it, but I, I would appreciate it if they had Game 2 scheduled at another time. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. All I have to do is sleep, so... Man, as I think about it, I almost kind of wonder if he... Even if he has the leadership, if he's just not supposed to battle with Kenobi... So if he's just supposed to leave five Destiny back for the two battles, is he even supposed to do both battles? I mean, he probably can't crack 12. Yeah, battling with, uh, with Anakin and Panaka, I think, is like definitely going to happen. Adam's clearly going through the math as well and figuring out what he's supposed to activate. Um, in case you're concerned, they're both fine on time. Uh, Treadwell's up 11 minutes, but Adam still has 25 left. There's no way the rest of this game's going to take 25 minutes. So, um, Oh, wait. There's a Clash in Lost? So if he clashes Barrack... Ooh... If he hits Barrack and clashes him, that should clear the site. That would be really good. There is definitely a clash. He, he lost the clash to, a, to damage earlier. I mean, I kind of assumed that the last card in Treadwell's hand's a Gick. But kind of always assume that. So it might not be. No reason to fight in space or against Vader. Yeah. Accurate. I don't think this deal deck runs a gig, does it? I, we don't know. It's possible that it does. He activated seven, so he left two four, he left, he left two destinies back. Or two cards in reserve. I wonder why. So he's going to do his damage, uh, which is two. Everything else is covered up. I'm really curious what the seven active force is for. Now, notable as well, Treadwell did again leave himself with no force available, so he can't react anything. He does get destiny on both of these. Space pedal would have been good even if he doesn't crack exactly can overpower it. Yeah, I mean that actually is 
as I think about it, is probably the most likely thing that he's left this two Destiny back for, is to just battle into the Executor and overpower him. Force him to, like, peel Wolf. And then just leave everybody else where they are. I guess you could actually move... Um, you could move somebody over. Because Padme would be the least risky one. Just so you get to do another another point of damage the next turn. I want to say one of them is a 5, guessing a 5 and a 3. Uh, I don't think we know what they are. I don't think so. He moves to the hallway for free. Yeah, no, I know. See you, Angeric. Sure, I mean, either way is fine. Uh, say so leaving uh, CEO and Jarek behind at the throne room to me leaves the highest chance that you will not lose the throne room on the next turn. Because CEO covers five in the worst case scenario. But either way, it's kind of fine. Like, all right. So, Adam gave a ver or verified his deck with Jedi business. He still has his walking retrieval to use, which could actually be what happens this turn when his seven force is up. He is going to take one, two, three, four, five, six next turn. So you really need this battle to be good. I mean, Maul doesn't really even matter. There's not enough force left to use Maul. Sorry, every time I mouse close to the top, it unminimizes my screen. So, Or un unmaximizes my screen, I should say. I kind of feel like Adam must not like those destinies. Otherwise, his decision was already made when he activated. Maybe also trying to figure out what he's... Like, he's got his solo that he can still use. He does have the controlled tunnel vision. He adds top. Okay. I think he messed up activate. I mean, I think he's thinking a long time because those destinies aren't as good as he thought he was. He is not used solo. Oh, I thought he buried out of hand. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So then the clash being in the loss doesn't matter. I thought he buried from hand. I missed that. So Top's going to shoot at Tarkin. Stand by. <laughs> Crash the server to get out of it. 
No, oh, there's a leadership. Uh, well, the problem with that, Dan, is that uh, Tup hits but does not make forfeit zero. I'm not even sure why Tarkin said he was forfeit four. No, he's forfeit six. It was remembering when I was looking at some other card. Oh, he does have the sorry about the mess. I'm all kinds of confused now. I'm a lot more with Joe now. This battle didn't seem very good. Because if you have the sorry about the mess, isn't it just way better to sorry about the mess like these guys? I guess clearing this site is better. Right? Ooh, that was a big mistake that he didn't cancel Tuff's text. That's potentially a big mistake anyway. Yep, and then add one. All right, all right, all right. And then that just gets canceled, no big deal. Can Tup shoot vehicles? He can shoot vehicles. That's also very good. Oh man, Vader doesn't even cover. He has to peel one too. Uh, I mean, Dan, I would give you credit for tracking, except that he shuffled and verified his deck, so... No. <laughs> Um, I mean, Vader doesn't die to attrition, but he can't just peel eight. Like, he has to just lose Vader either way. So, I don't know if I agree with that part there, Joe. Uh, he did get lucky that Jeff didn't blank the, didn't blank the tub. That, that is definitely true. Um, and yeah, the sorry about the mess is two lost force, so that's not irrelevant either. Um... But he did save a damage by clearing the sites. He's only he's gonna take five here. Can we see a Vivel alone? That's bizarre. I don't think that's the guy I would have put alone. I mean I guess Treadwell's last card is unlikely to be like Yasan or something, so probably doesn't really matter, but he saved two. Is he going to battle? Why would he save two? Alright, Adam loses Commander Cody from hand. Oh no, his escape pod combo from reserve. Mara's the best card to have here. Yeah, Mar'd be good. I mean, if he had Mara, though, he would have saved three, right? Yeah, he only saved two, so no, no, no barrier. Or no, um, no Mara. Adam has barrier or Hujix. I mean, I would assume if he's holding one card back and losing, losing from his reserve and whatnot elsewhere, he's probably saving a, a Hujix. There's the Ahsoka with sabers. Another day, Ahsoka. It's about to be another day. 
So I just love when there's like, oh, they have two characters that have a total defense of four. That's a perfect opportunity to use Ahsoka. I guess he could retrieve her, but... Still no Walkling Burn. I assume he's saving it in case he needs to, like... He needs to cancel a destiny here. Uh, saving the Force in case he needs to... Uh, to... He's testing. Uh, uh, life force in hand. Um, yes, eleven to five. That's correct. Ten down for Treadwell. Four down for Adam. And one in each in hand. Uh, no battle. Merrick Seal's getting out. Piet's getting out. I assume we're moving over to the uh, two two here. Yep. Okay, and now he's going to use his walking just to make sure he gets to retrieve one. Treadwell's drawing. That's curious. Can't cancel Destiny Draw. Yep. Yeah, Merrick Steel was a good early card for Treadwell to have. I mean, don't you just, like, activate and then battle the executor? Or activate two and battle the dudes on the ground at the courtyard? Activate three and battle executor. Well, no, because you left the Ahsoka down there. So you have to, like, activate one or don't have a way to shuffle. I guess he could pull the don't do that again shield to shuffle. Oh yeah, Merrick does have to be piloting. Ooh, I wonder if he forgot that. Yeah, and Wolf will just die if he battles. That's true. Now he just activates everything. Um, can they embark at the end of, of a move react? I know they can embark at the beginning of it when they get, like, when before the thing moves. And they can disembark after it ends up at the place it's going. Can somebody new get on at the place that the walker goes to? I don't think so. Jeff drew one too many. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Jaws. I don't think he really should have drawn there. I mean, he's just losing from hand to the damage, but that doesn't really change anything. He still probably shouldn't have And then he just lost from reserve. One, two, three, five, six. Uh, I mean, Adam is dead if he doesn't clear the middle site. Which he can't really do because he activated everything now. Maybe not a lot of experience maximizing diff. That's certainly true. That's certainly true, Joe. That maximizing diff in the top eight kind of situation is not something a lot of people do anymore. So. I mean, I think a loss by six here is, like, not bad. Probably seven, I guess. Adam or Treadwell may have a card he can put back, but... Loss by seven is totally, totally winnable on the other end. Um, I guess the counter to that, though... Well, okay. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, he really needed to leave one force back so he could battle at this middle s well no, if he battles oh no if he battles at the middle site he's fine because then he doesn't take as much damage because these walkers aren't at these sites to, to that'll save two damage by forcing them to react 
So actually, yeah, I think he should have saved one and battled at this middle site to pull the two walkers off of it. In fairness, something that only occurred to me just two seconds ago as I said it, so probably Adam didn't think about that. And Tup could have shot the walker. I mean, only if he saved uh, two force, uh, which he could have done. Um, but we know that that second force would be the Ahsoka, so he's going to miss whatever he shoots at anyway, so that doesn't really matter. Doesn't he just lose now, not saving any in reserve? Yeah, I think he does. That's what I think he really needed to, he needed to activate one less, because now he can't, now he can't do anything. He can, like, kill characters, but that's, that's, that's all he can do. Move Tup to block one. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's a good point, Joker King. So he can just do both of these. He can do both of these battles. This one's free. Spend a force to cancel the battle destiny. Spend a force to cancel the battle destiny. And then he can, like, move away. Because he's still going to outpower if he cancels the battle destinies. So he'll still kill characters. And, like, he can force the react. Like, if... If Treadwell reacts and moves over, um, then he saves two damage and doesn't die next turn. If it's not, you just lose stuff anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it. I think they're all higher than three now. What's left in the deck? Because it literally has to be a two or a one, right? So, because if it's a three, Kenobi can add one. I think Adam's trying to figure out if he's not just dead. No react needed, you just lose a guy. Yeah, 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 you just lose a guy, but then you can move Tup over, and then you're taking one, two, three, four, five, no, you're still dead. All right, so, yes. If he, if he reads it correctly and does not react, then he's toast. Which is why he needed to save one force. Oh, he has one in hand. Yes. Okay. All that having been said, I still think he was supposed to save a force in reserve. So that at least this battle's a threat, right? Like, if he saves one in reserve, you can't... You, you can't really... You have to react, right? Like... Just move top to block, battles are fine, whatever, he's just surviving one turn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this battle's fine. To place a card from hand on top of a reserve deck. Okay. So you can actually put two cards back in. Oh, he's going to grab that. Sure, he's going to put one card back. Sure, that's fine. The battles don't matter either way. Yeah. Cancel the battle destiny. Barrack doesn't get to do his thing because there's no attrition. Just forfeit a guy. And you just move Tup over. Yep. So it took Adam a little while to think through the play that we were talking through, which makes sense. One mine, not necessarily as fast as me and everybody in the chat, mostly everybody in the chat. But he did figure out the line. And then moves Jerishana go over, sure, whatever, fine. So now he's taking one, two, three, four, five. So he's going to have one card left in presumably reserve.
Uh, force. Okay, yeah. He's save the one in reserve. Five. Uh, he lost Ahsoka, Plo Koon, Bith Shuffle, Landing Claw, and Captain Rex from hand. They get to see what that last card in reserve is. We don't. It doesn't really matter. I don't think I like that. So Barrack moves in. Or not Barrack. Dresselin moves in. How much does Treadmill, ha Treadmill have in life? He has seven force down. So he's going to lose two here. Oh, he has a decree. Okay, never mind. Battle here. He pops the decree to draw destiny. Which I think means that Adam doesn't draw destiny. Oh no, he does, right. Because he only gets the battle free here. He doesn't get the battle free at the interior site. 14. And 4. Walker covers 4, so that's 12. So peel 2 more. Uh, that didn't seem good. I don't think the dress then was supposed to move in there. Why is it cover five? Oh, yep, covers five. Okay, that's fine then. Yep. Forgot about the plus one from the air attack. Win by four. Yeah. So Treadwell wins that by four, but definitely, definitely still a winnable match for Adam. Uh, yeah, good job cutting the diff. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I'm still not certain if he had saved the one force the previous turn, if he could have saved, prevented by more, but eh, probably not. Splitting hairs either way, so yeah, 30, 39 in loss, that's not too bad for uh, tiebreakers on loss pile. Vader Blank was like plus 6 diff, yeah, Vader, Vader Blank was good. Oh, 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 the, the Vader not blanking the, the, the tough, yes, sorry. First loss for Adam in the event, yeah? Uh, so... Oh no, they are going to play game two right now. Okay, all right, they're going to take a five minute, or at least Treadwell's proposing that they play game two right now. Um, we'll s you know, yep, all right, they're going to take a five minute break. Oh, oh boy. <coughs> I mean, I volunteered, so, you know, this is, this is what I deserve. entertain you uh well i believe the format of this top eight is that they get to choose um they, they get to they didn't have to submit deck lists or anything so i think they get to just pick kind of pick whatever decks they want here um so it'll be interesting to see how the tables turn here um as i said i'm not familiar with either of these players um with either of these players tendencies so uh, back here. Um, so I really don't know what we can expect to see from them. I'm tempted to look at this uh, game that's been frozen for a while here. Although my uh, 
Gamp is kind of laggy here. So. Oh, they had to submit both sides before game one. Okay, fair enough. Ryan would know, because he was also playing. He was also playing in this top eight. Um, so I guess that being said, then they won't be able to make choices now based on how close that game was. So um, still be interesting to see. Uh, see what what decisions they ended up making here on that yeah I don't know there's a lot there's a lot of decks that are up in the air right now and I don't know if either of these two guys are going to the NPC um, I would assume that Adam's probably holding some stuff back because I think his teammates are going to the NPC um, but I don't know I don't know if that's the case for Treadwell so we'll see uh, we'll see if they have anything spicy to bring out. I know that those two decks that they just played are pretty pretty standard fare, I think for um for Jawa, they look like about the same decks you would have seen before the last set came out. So Chodol and Diplo dances. Okay. That's certainly possible. Diplo's a good deck. Uh, like being able to make in-game just uh oh. Sorry guys, something freaked out there. Uh Alright, I think the chat's still going. You guys will have to let me know if the stream is still going here. Um, I may actually just want to reset it anyway, since I'm having a little bit of, uh, a little bit of lag issues here. Uh, since I have the break, I may, uh, I may do that anyway. Stream is still working. Okay. Okay. Well, I won't, I won't necessarily, I may actually stop anyway, just to refresh it, because... I certainly won't be able to stream very much if I can't watch the game. All right, uh, for ease of editing later and posting later, I'm actually I'm gonna break the stream up here, so I'm gonna kind of pause the stream, reset my stuff, and come right back. So uh, don't go anywhere. We'll be we'll be back in just a minute or so here with the uh, game two of this match. <laughs> 